to Tucker Carlson tonight. Kanye West, now known as Ye, is one of the best-selling musical artists in the world. He's also in recent years become a celebrated and very highly paid fashion designer. And of course, for a decade, he was well known to TV audiences as an in-law of the Kardashian family. But it's West's latest incarnation as a kind of Christian evangelist that brought us to his office in Los Angeles today for the interview you're about to see. Days ago, during Fashion Week in Paris, West, accompanied by his friend Candace Owens, unveiled a T-shirt that read simply, White Lives Matter. The response from the fashion industry and international media was instantaneous and uniform. Shock, horror, rage. There is no excuse for this, thundered the New York Times. West is legitimizing extremism, shrieked Rolling Stone, etc., etc. What was strikingly missing from the coverage, however, was any explanation for why West did this. What was the T-shirt about? No one seemed to think to ask him, much less to listen to what he had to say. Instead, the enemies of his ideas dismissed West, as they have for years, as mentally ill. Too crazy to take seriously. Look away! Ignore him! He's a mental patient. There's nothing to see here. But is West crazy? You can judge for yourself as you watch what we're about to show you. He has his own ideas, we can say that. Creative people tend to. That's why they're artists, not actuaries. His freeform social media posts give the impression of a man channeling his rawest emotions right onto Instagram. The effect can be jarring, and it's often used as ammunition against him in the battle for influence over the minds of America's young people. And that battle is intense. But crazy? That was not our conclusion. In fact, we've rarely heard a man speak so honestly and so movingly about what he believes. But again, you can judge for yourself. Here it is. So you just came from Paris Fashion Week. You just landed, and yeah. the lanyard's still on from it, and there's a photograph on it. What is that? It's a photograph of a baby's ultrasound. Why is that? And that you designed that? Yes. Why? What does that mean? Uh, it just represents life. I'm pro-life. Boy, so you wear it on a badge. What, what kind of response do you get? And, and good, amen, I agree. I don't care about people's responses. I care about the fact that there's more black babies being aborted than born in New York City at this point. That 50% of black death in America is abortion. So I really don't care about people's responses. I perform for an audience of one, and that's God. <laughs> I'm, starting, I'm starting to see why they want to make you be quiet. Um, how, when did you start to feel this way? When did you start to realize this? I, I really felt like, I think I started to really feel this need to express myself on another level when Trump was running for office and I liked him. Yes. And every single person in Hollywood, from my ex-wife to my mother-in-law to my manager at that time to, you know, my, my so-called friends slash handlers around me told me, like, if I said that I like Trump, that my career would be over, that my life would be over. Uh, they said stuff like people get killed for wearing a hat like that. They threatened my life. They put my life. They basically said that I would be killed uh, for uh, wearing the hat. I had a, a, someone call me last night and said anybody wearing a White Lives Matter shirt is going to be greenlit, and that means that they're going to beat them up if they wear it. And I'm like, you know, okay, green light me then. <laughs> you know, you know, God builds warriors in a different way. I don't know if it's because of me being a born in Atlanta and growing up on the south side of Chicago that, you know, he made me for such a such a time like this. It's like with David. You know, he tended to the sheep, but while he was out there, he had to fight all kinds of animals. So when it was time for Goliath to come, you thought because he was a sheep herder that he didn't have the skill set to take down Goliath. And the thing that I have is the position. I have my heart. But the number one thing is we have God on our side. And for the people, even if you don't believe in God, God believes in you. So you made reference to the White Lives Matter t-shirt, mm -hmm. which you brought out at Paris Fashion Week. Yeah. Why, wh why did you do that, and what did it mean? You know, I did. I do certain things from a feeling. I like. I just. I just channel the energy. It just feels right. It's using a gut instinct, a connection with God, and 
just brilliance. You know, like as if you ask like Tanya Harding how she did the, the triple flip or the triple spin, yeah. she was in so much practice that when it was time for her to skate in a, in a, comp, in a competitive format, it just happened. Like it happened outside of practice, it happened in the real format. And that's, what hap that's what's happening is God is like preparing us for the real, for the real battles. And we are, we are in a battle with the media. Like the majority of the media has a, a godless agenda and the jokes are not working. This whole like, oh yeah, he's crazy and all these things, they don't work because the media has, you know, they've also watch travesties happen, just even specifically to me, and just watch it and act like it wasn't happening, and they stay quiet about it. Uh, what have they so, ignored? What have well, they ignored? I want to answer the, the white. Yeah. I, I feel like someone caught what I was saying, the comparison of Tanya Harden about the, the White Lives Matter. You know, my dad is an educated um, ex-Black Panther, and he put a text to me today, he said, white lives matter, ha, 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 ha. And I said, I thought the shirt was a funny shirt. I thought the idea of me wearing it was funny. And I said, dad, what do you think it was funny? He said, just, just a black man stating the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, my dad doesn't listen to rap music. And he's like super educated. We, we opened up a water distribution center in the Dominican Republic together. He's like the original Steve Jobs, but he was getting blocked every which way with all of his ideas. And he didn't have uh, an endless bank account and he didn't have an Instagram. So all these ideas, he had to like take them back and compress them. Like my dad is the most brilliant person that I know and we actually have a strained relationship because I was taken from him because my mom was an actress, so she was a liberal. And my dad would see certain things and say, you know, we should do it this way, we should do it that way. And the people got around my mom and pulled her away, much like, you know, Kim is a Christian, but she has people who want her to go to Interview Magazine and put her ass out while she's a 40-something-year-old multi-billionaire with four black children. And this is what, how fashion wants to, uh, how they want to present her. So I know you give these, um, you get these questions and I give you like these three-part answers. Is this a cool format for you? Yeah, I love it. it. Okay, cool. And I am following it. All right. So you said um, that your father said when he saw the shirt, White Lives Matter, it's great to see a black man stating the obvious. So by which I think you meant that's obviously true. Yeah, that my favorite response, because I kept on thinking like, you know, people, they're looking for an explanation and people say, well, as an artist, you don't have to give an explanation, but as a leader, you do. Yes, I think that's right. So the answer to why I wrote White Lives Matter on a shirt is because they do. It's the obvious thing. Yeah. Why, why do you think that's so, and, and I assume the implication is, of course, all lives matter because they're lives, because God created them. Yeah. Why do you think that that would be considered controversial? Because the same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black and the vernacular that we're supposed to have. My dad grew up as a military brat and his family moved around, but they were based mostly in Delaware. And at the time, if, if he wasn't, if they weren't the only black family, they were one of the few. And he would be discriminated against because he was black. So by the time he got into college, he would be discriminated against, he went to a black college, he would be discriminated against because they said he talked too white. Yes. And then he played the kick drum in the band. So when he would go to the club and the music was playing, where would he clap his hands? Where the kick drum is. Yeah. So it was the opposite of where everyone else right, exactly. was clapping their hands. <laughs> and uh, this is the most elegant and tasteful 
person that I know and when my mom, when they, when, when the school suggested it, like the hurting systems, because what they do is take the, um, the black community and they separate us and they separate the families and the educated, uh, they, they, you know, they push this, you know, need for higher education and us as blacks, we discriminate against each other and say, well, I got my PhD and you don't have your PhD, so I'm better than you. And so my mom, she had a PhD and she was influenced to uh, move to the south side of Chicago and take this job at Chicago State University. And she told my dad, if you come, if you come for us, you know, you'll never see him again. Because, you know, the media ridiculed me for getting the house next door to Kim to see my children. And they even said that I was stalking her and her new boyfriend because I bought the house next door to see my children. And I, that's, that's how I knew that that, uh, that my mom had said that to him. I said, Dad, you know, they moved us to one of the most dangerous, agreed upon to be one of the most dangerous places in the world. It's almost like they tried to kill me or something. Uh, I said, Dad, why didn't you ever, why did you never come to get us? And that's when he told me, that's when he told me that she was told that. You know, there's so many things that are put in Kim's head. You know, they bring influencers like, no one ever knew where Corey Gamble came from. No one in the fashion world knows where Gabby came from. These people were practically made in a laboratory, in my opinion. And one of the things that they're really good at doing is being nice and being likable. And what they do is, for people that have some form of influence, whether it's an educated black woman like my mother, that became the head of the English department at Chicago State University, or whether it's the most influential uh, white woman on the planet, being my ex-wife, they have people that are around them at all times telling them what to be afraid of. It's like not what to do or say specifically, it's what to be afraid of. And if you have a person that isn't afraid of them, you know, like, a Russell Brand or yeah. Candace Owens. Right. Or, it's not that we have to agree right. no. with this, but they're not afraid. They're not afraid to state what their opinion is. Yes. Everyone, no one is God, and everyone has an opinion. So a conversation like this is a window into a world that you don't see. So if you're familiar with West from the media, you think of him as an individual man. What you don't think about is that he is at the center of a battle, and people like him are at the center of a battle to get a message out. Mouthed by the lips of influencers like him and so many others, that extends a storyline on behalf of, well, in this case, the status quo. So there are a lot of people vying to make certain that people like him say the right things, and the consequences for not doing that are very severe. So for him to come out and say all lives matter, obviously, is a huge threat to a lot of people. Who are those people exactly? Well, we asked him, and he told us. That's next. 